Hi, today we'll be discussing on rotavirus vaccination. I've tried to make it as simple as possible. So let's get into this topic. This has been one of the long requested topics in fact. So as to the introduction, rotavirus is the leading cause for diarrhea with severe dehydration worldwide. In fact, that is the number one leading cause uh, in the global study which was conducted, which was followed by cryptosporidium, enterotoxigenic E. coli and shigella. And India accounted for 22% of all rotaviral deaths worldwide. Rotavirus is a RNA virus with seven zero groups, then multiple serotypes, genotypes, etc., etc. What we need to know is A causes the most severe disease, whereas the most common is G1P8 variety. There are multiple vaccines. As far as India is concerned, we have four vaccines that are commonly in use. The monovalent RV1 vaccine or Rotarix the RV5 pentavalent vaccine, Rotatec. These two are available worldwide. And Indian neonatal rotavirus vaccine, 116E, which is Rotavac. A similar vaccine by Abbott Rotashare is not available in India. And uh, bovine uh, human reassortant pentavalent vaccine, which is Rotasil. These two are not available worldwide, only in select few countries. The common thing among all these vaccines is that all are live vaccines. All are given orally, never should be injected. It is oral vaccination. And all are usually stored at 2 to 8 degrees, with a few exceptions as below. The Rotavac vaccine, which is 116E, Indian neonatal rotavirus vaccine, can be frozen too at minus 20 degrees. Nothing happens to it. Whereas rest of the rotavirus vaccine should not be frozen and should be stored in the middle compartment of the refrigerator. Rotasil the bovine human reassortant pentavalent vaccine is thermostable even at 40 degrees Celsius for six months. Let's see one by one as um, the differences between vaccines. I think that way it will be easier for us to remember. RV1 and RV5, Rotarix versus Rotatec. RV1 is a human rotavirus vaccine, G1P1A8. Each ml of the vaccine contains 10 power 6 median culture of the rotavirus. It's available as a lyophilized powder which has to be reconstituted with a diluent. The dose is 1 ml. It's stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius and it should never be frozen. RV5 is a human bovine reassortant. Please note that this is a human um, rotaviral origin virus containing G1, G2, G3, G4 and P1A8 reassorted with bovine WC23. 2 ml of the vaccine contains 2 into 10 power 6 units of each of the reassorted virus. It's available as a liquid formulation used in a ready-made format. It does not require a reconstitution since it's already a liquid formulation. It's suspended in a buffer solution. 2 ml dose, it's stored at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Indian 116E. This is also a bovine human reassortment, but just a single one. The human component is G9P11, whereas the bovine component is VP4. 0.5 ml of the vaccine should contain minimum of 10 power 5 focus forming unit. If you see FFU, it means it's focus forming unit. If you see NLT, it means not less than, meaning a 0.5 ml of uh, this vaccine, which is Rotavac, should contain NLT, not less than 10 power 5 focus forming unit. This is also a liquid vaccine. However, there is no buffer in it. It is a ready made vaccine, meaning you can give it ready to use. Um, it can be frozen, minus 20 degrees Celsius till expiry or 5 plus or minus 3 degrees Celsius if you are going to store it. In other words, 2 to 8 degrees, which is the usual storage period for vaccines, you can store it for up to 6 months. So this is Rotavac. What about the last one? Last one is bovine human reassortant rotavirus pentavalent vaccine. This is also pentavalent, but the only difference is there is 5 bovine components, G1, G2, G3, G4 and G9 along with a human virus. 2.5 ml of this pentavalent vaccine will have not less than 10 to the power of 5.6 focus forming units of every serotype. This is a freeze dried vaccine which is available along with the diluent hence requires reconstitution. This is the thermostable vaccine. 
which is thermostable at even 40 degrees Celsius for 6 months, 24 degrees Celsius for 30 months, which is uh, the usual uh, shelf life at this degree Celsius, at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius for 3 years. This is marketed under the name Rotasil. So these are the main four vaccines that are available in India and these are the common differences or uh, common things that I can find. As to the efficacy, you give the vaccine so that it prevents rotavirus gastroenteritis, right? So RV1 and RV5 are almost similar in their uh, efficacy even though the constitution of the vaccine is different. 80 to 90 percent protection against severe rotaviral gastroenteritis uh, in when studies done in uh, USA, I think. Whereas when the study, same study was done in Africa, they found a lower efficacy of 50 to 80 percent, which is almost similar to that of the Indian rotaviral vaccine, where the severe, severe rotaviral gastroenteritis protection is about 55 percent for the first year and 50 percent for the second year. The common adverse reaction that you can find are, apart from the usual local reaction, systemic reaction, it's intersusception. Intersusception was more with the initial rotavirus vaccine, which was Rota Shield, that is not being marketed anymore. Uh, and current uh, vaccines, the multicentric studies that they are doing, and um, uh, uh, how to tell? Here, here I am not able to recall the name. The meta-analysis, yeah, meta-analysis does not show uh, much of an increase in intersusception uh, when you compare it with that of a placebo. However, a small study says there is an increased risk of intersusception, especially in the first one week post-vaccination and maximum after the first dose rather than the subsequent doses. The contraindication for vaccines. As with any other vaccination, if there is anaphylactic reaction to the previous vaccine or to any of the components, because there are multiple buffers, there is a diluent with so many contents in it. So if any of the component, uh, the patient is going to be allergic, you are not going to give the vaccination. If there is a past history of intersusception, that's a contraindication. Latex allergy. Please, please remember children with spina bifida, those are the people who are prone to latex allergies. So you should actually maintain a latex free environment. So these children should not receive RV1 because that the dropper mechanism that you that you have with the vaccine has latex in it. So they should not receive RV1. RV5 can be given. And subacute combined immunodeficiency disorder, severe combined immunodeficiency, I'm sorry. It's not subacute, it's severe combined immunodeficiency disorder. Again, that's a contraindication for receiving rotavirus vaccine. Precautionary use of rotavirus vaccine in case of altered immunocompetence, anything other than SCID, severe gastroenteritis, postpone the dose, chronic GI disorder. So what about the schedule? Schedule for RV1, it is 6 weeks and 10 weeks and RV5, it is 6, 10 and 14 weeks. The lower age limit and upper age limit, it varies between the uh, body that gives out recommendations. WHO says vaccination of rotavirus should be completed before two years of age. The universal immunization program, uh, the rotaviral vaccine was introduced in 2016 into our universal immunization program and that is being given at 6, 10 and 14 weeks. The maximum upper age limit under universal immunization program is one year. If suppose the first dose was received before one year of age, then the next two doses can be given at four week intervals. According to IAP, the upper age limit for first dose is 15 weeks or 14 weeks and six days if you want to be very exact. The upper limit for the last dose depends on the brand of the vaccine. If it is Rota Tech, it is 32 weeks and if it is Rota Rix, by 25 weeks, the last dose should be administered to the patient. I think that's all about uh, rotavirus vaccine. Hope this was useful to you. If you have any doubts, uh, you can ping me down in the comments below. I'll try to answer them. If I made any mistakes also, please let me know. I'll definitely update it so that we will correct ourselves as we go along. Uh, thank you guys for taking the time to listen to this. Please share this among your uh, colleagues and students and let's learn, let's become better in knowing about the vaccines that we use day in and day out. Thank you and bye-bye.